Good morning on Thursday the 30th of July. Let me ask you a simple question. How real and near is God to you? I want to share with you how the reality and nearness of God has changed for me over this lockdown period. Some of you may remember me sharing about the power of prayer in the history of Highfields. How God has powerfully answered our prayers of faith and done miracles before our very eyes. You can find that interview on the Highfields website. Yet even after experiencing amazing answers to prayer, God can feel distant and remote because sometimes out of sight can mean out of mind. But we have all had more time to think and ponder anew because of COVID-19. Some of you will know that Val, my wife, has wonderfully green fingers and so our patio is full of beautiful flowers and I've often sat here in glorious sunshine musing on the beauty, integracy, variation of colour here and of how God has done it all. Another favourite part of creation for me are trees. Maybe it's the structure of trees, how my uh, lifetime of uh, involvement with engineering structures and building structures uh, helps me to appreciate the, uh, the tree shapes and how they even stand up. And then I've turned my uh, thoughts to the sun and the light and remembering the perfect proportion of the diameters of the sun and the earth and the moon and their distances apart that makes beautiful eclipses possible. You know, there's not been any haphazard Big Bang. God's fingers have been at work. Then I turned my mind to my training as a civil engineer. We studied thermodynamics at the start of the degree course I took. And I well remember taking an exam a mere three months after commencing at London University. Two questions, and I couldn't answer either of them. Thankfully, that was the one and only time I managed to get a zero in an exam. Anyway, I did get the hang of it in the end. The first law of thermodynamics is about conservation of energy. It states that the total energy and matter in the universe is constant merely changing from one form to another. So how come scientists can be atheists? And then I've been watching a wonderful, uh, some wonderful nature programs and there was a remarkable uh, program fairly recently on planet Pluto, furthest from the sun and formed of ice. Scientists are mystified by what they found from a recent space exploration of that planet. Design is a hallmark, the, the hallmark of the universe, which God spoke into being. There is light because God, who is light, said, let there be light. And there is life, because God, who is life, said, let the earth bring forth living creatures. Then looking at ourselves, so incredibly complex, I'm 
reminded that we are not animals, but creatures made in God's image. God is, and Jesus is, All this reinforced it in my mind and heart and brought to mind the importance of being regular in prayer who is more ready to hear than we are to pray. God our Father and Jesus our Saviour want us to be in a close relationship with him. Oh for us to love and praise him more. Hebrews 11 tells us that by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. But God's word is not a what. God's word is a who. God's word is his son. In the beginning was the word, we read in John 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God and the Word was God. John tells us as well that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And Jesus came saying, I am the light of the world. That is the good news of the Bible. There is an uncreated and eternal light his name is Jesus and he conquers darkness and gives us the light of life. He came to make it possible for us sinful people to be accepted by a loving God and a holy God and dying as a ransom in our place. So if God seems remote to us, if we are suffering in the circumstances of the pandemic, with fear, perhaps, frustrations, furloughing, or even more significantly, with redundancy and unemployment. Let us turn to Jesus, who came to give us life that is abundant and joyous. You remember Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Let us praise him who came to earth to save us and give us the hope of eternal life. All praise to him who humbly came to bear our sorrow, sin and shame, who lived to die, who died to rise, the all-sufficient sacrifice. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the way that you speak to us and you show us that you are the great I am. We thank you that you have shown us, and brought us from being in darkness, being blind to your truth. We thank you that you have shown us through creation, but also through revealing to us your Son and why he came and what he came to do to die for us. Lord, we thank you for waking us up, for bringing us from death to life. And we pray, Lord, that as we delve more and more into your word, and we read it and we pray to you, we pray, Lord, that we would be drawn nearer to you and that the reality of you as our loving Father. Thank you that you loved us from before the world began. And Lord, we, we pray that you would take us on with you and that we would become more and more like Jesus and living our lives on this earth for your glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah. Uh -huh.
his might. Oh, praise to him who names the stars that sing his fame in skies afar. Oh, praise to him who reigns in love, who guides the galaxies above, yet bends to hear our every prayer with sovereign power and tender care. Oh, praise to him whose love is seen in Christ the Son, the servant King, who left behind his glorious throne to pay the ransom for his own. Oh, praise to him who humbly came to bear our sorrow, sin and shame, who lived to die, who died to rise, the all-sufficient sacrifice. Him whose power 